All right, good morning, First Lutheran Faith Community. Uh, welcome to worship. Uh, Pastor Brian here, uh, coming to you live from Washington Park, Cincinnati. Uh, if you are a visitor today, we are glad that you chose to join us uh, for your Sabbath practice of worship. Uh, whether you're a visitor or a member, uh, we're, we're thrilled you're here. If you're a visitor, we know that you are fully welcome to participate in the life of our faith community, uh, not just on Sunday, but Monday through Saturday as well. Welcome and greetings to you if you're watching the recording version of this uh, on our YouTube channel or Facebook link. Uh, thank you for uh, watching the service and feel free to reach out through social media or email uh, website if you have questions or would like to learn more about our ministry. Uh, today, uh, announcements, uh, go ahead and flip on to that. We got greeters, we got Jeff and uh, Zoe offering the greeting there. Uh, good morning, Jeff and Zoe. And uh, it's good to have those smiling faces saying welcome to worship. Uh, I will be leaving tomorrow morning to fly out to California to be with my mother as she started another series of chemo treatments. And I'll be out there for 10 days. And uh, so I'll still be working. I'll have my computer, but there'll be three days I'll be uh, traveling to the chemo treatments. And then also two days I'll be flying. So if there's five days I will not be able to uh, uh, be in connection. So I am one second there. I'm getting a message. We're getting a lot of feedback so ed could you please turn down the volume on that that's picking up here the volume on that please there we go i think that should be better all right so uh with that then uh as i'm out here i'll be here next sunday as well but next sunday in washington park we'll still have opportunity to gather together uh if you just show up like we do today and today if you just showed up uh ed and bev beverly brought two dozen donuts from Holtman's and uh, two cartons of coffee, I think. So uh, we are enjoying that. Uh, also here today, James from uh, the neighborhood, uh, lives around the corner, uh, showed up and he saw it on Facebook and is here today as well. So uh, you never know who's going to be able to connect with here in the park. Uh, Dan and Randy uh, will be. Dan, go ahead and uh, make an announcement about yourself and Randy there. Sure. Um, so big news that uh, Miami, Ohio is having their uh, summer graduation for their doctoral programs in person. Uh, and so Randy and I and her parents are officially coming to Cincinnati uh, August 11th through 17th. I don't know what the schedule will look like, uh, but I think our goal will be that we'll be, uh, whether it be in the park or if we have uh, in-person worship by that point, I don't know, but I won't be in Portland. Uh, I know that much. <laughs> Um, so we'll, uh, we'll figure out what that schedule looks like. I hope to see many of you while we're in the Queen City. All right, and uh, it'll be a big celebration for Randy and the completion of her degree program. Uh, with that, uh, I'll just touch on it now. Dan mentions not sure where we'll be, whether it's worship in the park or in, uh, wherever, but uh, uh, one thing is clear is to me is, as one who's a steward of worship for First Lutheran is uh, there's there are a lot of people who are able to uh, enjoy and, and benefit from live Zoom worship, but we also have a lot of people who really uh, do need, and I think all of us do, but more some more than others, to be in person in worship. So uh, we, I will be working with Matthew to uh, figure out a place where we can be uh, more formal and intentional in gathering together in larger groups rather than just the park setting. So uh, just to plant that seed and, and uh, continue to pray for that aspect of our ministry as well. Uh, it's it's uh, ongoing concern and challenge, but uh, know that we're mindful about that. Uh, next time we'll be leading worship today, myself, intern Tyler, and uh, uh, Dan Posnick. I'd also like to add two prayer uh, petitions. One is, before we go there, Dan, the sirens go by here. And that's an ambulance, so we can add that to the prayer. Uh, but uh, one is just, I just, we, well, I was Really, literally the minute before uh, when I was striking the hour, I got the text message. Rachel's dad had a cardiac event last Thursday and has been in the hospital since, and he had an angiogram this morning. And while they were in there, they did discover blockage and they did put in a stent, I just read. So uh, that was successful. So uh, the 80, 90% blockage in artery is now uh, being served by a stent that keeps it open. Uh, so that was uh, certainly on unwelcome and surprise, uh, not related to COVID. I think it's just heart disease kind of uh, situation with calcification that would have happened either way. So not a COVID, uh, we were afraid it might be a COVID uh, uh, lingering symptom. Uh, so uh, prayers for Rachel on that. She's up in Illinois and will be for several more days, I suspect. She's been up there since Thursday. 
I'm leaving. Nick and Liam just got home yesterday from California. They'll be with uh, uh, together at home. So Nick's watching out for Liam. So pray for Liam. Uh, also, uh, another note is uh, Chrissy McCabe just made the announcement that her and her husband, Dan, uh, made a difficult decision to transition out of their uh, partnerships in the Motor Pub and Woodward Theater, uh, something on Main Street here and over the Rhine. They have invested a significant uh, amount of uh, their sweat and lives into that and passions and invested themselves fully into those uh, businesses. And uh, this is not an easy transition I can imagine for them. She just shared that announcement for worship. So uh, we will be praying for them during this time. And uh, uh, thank you, Chrissy, for sharing that. Our next uh, announcement, I can go down to the next slide, is a bell tower update. And certainly that's been uh, yesterday. Today's D-Day, June 6th anniversary. Uh, but yesterday was a D-Day in the sense of the bell tower countdown to the deadline that we established for uh, the community's effort to save the tower. And with that, there's a picture of me there. I was on Fox 19 again this week and, and uh, uh, lots of interviews and phone interviews and whatnot. But, but this is uh, the, the update for now is communication with the leadership team, uh, the funds. The, there's funding and we got a good cost estimate in. And with it, there appears to be a, a path to save the bell tower. It's largely, not entirely, contingent upon the city of Cincinnati approving the recommendation of $1 million in the city budget, which would be by June 30th, no later, because that's when it has, it's a deadline, but traditionally is voted on the last week. So June 23rd could be the day we find out on that. Uh, but I say it's not the only factor in there. If that comes in and, and uh, the cost estimate, then we do have funds, but there's still work to be done uh, among our leadership team and then also among the members of the congregation to uh, continue to offer up uh, insights, thoughts, but the specific I think, leadership team to look at the financial uh, path for this to happen to make sure we fully understand what that means and to make sure that we are not uh, being exposed for financial liabilities or risks in this. Uh, that's something I've been adamant about. I would not put First Lutheran at any risk financially uh, for the bell tower uh, restoration effort. Uh, this is something that the community would have to fund and uh, assume the risks on. So uh, continue to pray for us. We will keep you up to date and, and hopefully we'll be able to share news as it comes around. But for now, uh, the bell tower will be up for uh, Till, well, I'm not going to give a date. So, uh, but we're not. So we're not. We're not saying the bell tower is safe. We're not saying the bell tower is coming down. We're we're uh, in a liminal state here, uh, which isn't enjoyable, but it's a necessary place to be as we finalize some details. So, thank you for your prayers, patience, and thank you to all those who've been supportive of this. Uh, many, many, many first Lutheran people. I had the privilege uh, of seeing the names of people who are making donations. Uh, a lot of first Lutheran people and friends, some members and friends. Uh, making contributions and also sending emails to city council. So uh, it is supported, but I also hear the voices of those, as I said earlier about worship, that I myself included the desire, deep desire to get back together. We have a new worship arts director. Uh, and we have an intern who'd like to get back into person, uh, but we also have uh, families with children uh, who, who desire to get back together and have uh, experiences for faith formation and whatnot. So uh, keep this in our, our, our ongoing prayers. Uh, next slide is uh, shifting gears a little bit here to some, um, here's a picture of a guy playing an organ. And what that is, that's the Southern Ohio Synod Assembly. And Cindy Schrader, I didn't give you a heads up, but if you are willing, would you unmute yourself and offer some comments on the Southern Ohio Synod Assembly that just happened Friday night and yesterday? Okay, thanks, Pastor. Um, yes, um, it was via Zoom webinar. Um, so it may be certainly more appreciative of those that have been on webinars for the last year plus, um, cause uh, towards the end, I have to admit it was a little bit painstaking, but it all turned out great. There were over 200 people that attended the synod, um, assembly, which, um, uh, usually happens on a uh, every other year, um, but it is a summary of the activity of the Southern Ohio Synod um, and the ministries that it's involved with. Um, and, you know, we passed a budget and elected new members to, to church council. We elected, uh, I'm not church council, but synod council, and also elected um, people that will go to church-wide assembly which is next year in Columbus hopefully hopefully in person and our um, 
a very own Elizabeth Gilbert was elected to represent uh, um, youth, if you will. Uh, so we're excited for her and her her efforts called Gather were definitely highlighted also at the Senate Assembly, along with the Tucan Farm, which is out in Mount Healthy, uh, which is something that we have given some of our uh, ministry dollars towards. So um, very, very active um, Synod, Bishop Dillahunt, I'm telling you, she, she rules the roost and I really, really have a very high opinion of her and, and what, what she, her leadership and um, her skills. So that's a summary. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. Um, before we move on, Dan, the next slide, I want to leave it on this one here because it's a connection that I'm, I'm, as I look around here in the park, I'm reminded that uh, lots of worship happening here today. Uh, right behind me, behind the flower garden, there is the Shakespeare Theater and over the Rhine Church is their doors are open and they've gathered for worship, which they began at 11 o'clock and Memorial Hall uh, worship as well. Uh, you hear our carillon going off there. God, keep us steadfast in your word. Uh, but then over on the north side of the park on the main stage, uh, OTR, a warehouse church led by Sherman and Sedell Bad Bradley and, and Nass Trinity Church, they are doing a launch. So they will have a large outdoor uh, rock and worship service here. I'm not sure exactly the time. I think it's two o'clock, uh, but they're supported by Hyde Park Redeemer uh, Methodist Church. So that'll be a significant event here. So it's worship on the park is certainly present. And uh, we lift up and pray for those who proclaim the gospel. Uh, so, uh, that's it. Uh, Next, uh, one more thing on today is uh, personal notice on June 6, 2006. No, 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 June, yeah, June 6, 2004. So 17 years ago today, uh, Mount Zion Lutheran Church in Hudson, Wisconsin, voted uh, to call yours truly as their pastor. So it was a uh, vote, and I uh, started in August, but today was the day, 17 years ago today, that uh, I was called, um, received my first call, uh, vote from a congregation. So, uh, they passed me along down here, so thanks for letting me uh, uh, be, serve you as pastor and, and be your partner in this here. Uh, next slide would be is on a picture of, uh, there's two, the, the bearded guy on the left is John Meyer. Last week I mentioned that we received a letter from uh, his ancestor, his descendant, his descendant that uh, indicated their relationship. So John Meyer is one of the 25 founding members of the church. There's only one picture of a founding member, and it happens to be John Myers. And the gentleman in the middle, in, the, in front of the stained glass with the two ladies, is Bill Myers, his great, great, uh, great grandson. And uh, the daughters are uh, Bill's daughters, so they are great, 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 great granddaughters, or four greats, or something like that. So I don't know if you see the resemblance or not between John Meyer, the founding member, and uh, the guy in the middle, but he certainly is uh, a, a joy to meet. He was here yesterday. We had an event in the park, and he... Uh, uh, has a great sense of humor. Uh, just uh, he's a passionate about the streetcar. He rode the last streetcar in 1951, I think. And because of that, they said you need to ride the first one in 2016. So he's a streetcar advocate. So another connection to our uh, location and church here. Uh, more stories, hopefully, to come on that. But it was a joy to be in the presence of someone who has a direct connection to the first Lutheran's beginnings. Uh, next, and Kathy, I see Kathy Haynes' image on there. So Kathy, if you can make sure to let us know when Joanne might be available to say hi, that would be great. I don't want to miss that opportunity. Uh, and then uh, next slide then, I think we're ready to move into our time of worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from your sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. I invite you to join with me. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. 
turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. All-powerful God, in Jesus Christ you turned death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil and the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went home, and the crowds came together again, so that Jesus and the disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. 
Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my, and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, I can resonate with the opening line there, the gospel where the people uh, say that when Jesus comes by, he has gone out of his mind. You know, sometimes I feel that way uh, as the leader of a faith community and uh, uh, it, it, it can be uh, uh, challenging at times. But so I'm in good company, I guess, in that regard. Not that I'm comparing myself to Jesus. That's a uh, danger pastors fall into, that messianic complex. But uh, with it, the picture on your screen there is... It was a sunny blue sky day yesterday here in the park, and we had a group of people here uh, going around with collecting signatures and passing out stickers, save the bell tower. And during the event, uh, Mary Helen and Jennifer West uh, happened to come by the park. And that's who you see pictured in there. Uh, Mary Helen is a uh, long time, uh, well, she's not a member now, she's a member of uh, St. Paul's Lutheran and, and Reading, uh, but she was at Roselawn Lutheran Church, uh, and Bill Reed, who's here now, and, and uh, Betty Hoffman certainly uh, would recognize her name and know her, uh, and she was baptized at First Lutheran Church and confirmed uh, by Pastor Lutton in the 1940s, uh, the pastor who oversaw a long, slow decline of the faith community uh, during the 30s and late 20s and 30s and 40s, during depression and war, and a most difficult time, and she tells the story that being confirmed, there are only three students in her confirmation group. Uh, but then she stayed with the church, Mary Helen did. And in 1953, she, her marriage was officiated by Clarence Miller, the mission pastor who I talk about quite a bit, who came uh, in the, when the church became a mission site here in the city of Cincinnati. And so she saw a glimpse of two worlds of First Lutheran most readily and clearly. And I don't know if Joanne is on yet or not. I have not uh, been able to see that uh dan is joanne on no she's not okay but joanne would remember or no certainly know mary helen uh for the years that they were together here and joanne would be able to tell stories about those same years as well uh she was very active taking minutes at meetings uh at the time when mary helen was getting married so they both were would share have a shared journey together standing and jennifer the daughter of mary helen also had strong connections to the church it is rich yesterday having experience uh, to be first to meet with Bill Meyer, the descendant of the John Meyer. Uh, and that connection going back to the origins of this 179 year old faith community, that connective thread, uh, it gives you a, a little bit of a chill uh, to feel, to be in the presence and, and imagine uh, what it might have been like and to have some tangible connection directly back to that founding member. And then with Mary Helen. Uh, to stand in her presence as she's standing in the park, Washington Park. And we have a picture of the church from about 1941 or 42. And uh, it, 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 it's she would have been in confirmation at that time. And so that picture, rather than being a distant memory, was something she lived and experienced. And if I had the picture, I'd have asked, hey, do you know whose car that is parked out front? And she might have said, sure, that's my parents or whatever. And what a delight connection, not just some black and white photo, but a very real point in time a very, very real point in time in the history and ministry of our faith community with a real active uh, participant in that time. Standing with Mary Helen in the park and her looking at the church reminds me of when I go to Sandwich, Illinois, quite often summertime and a nice summer day, and I convince my boys, whoever's with, to go visit the farm I grew up on. And when we go out to that farm, I'm excited to tell stories, but I just know their enthusiasm isn't as great as mine. They appreciate the fact that this is where dad lived and grew up, but I just know that they cannot fully appreciate what I know in my head. I, they cannot experience the smells, the sights, the sounds, feel the wind, the humidity, hear the voices and the tones of voices and recall conversations of, amongst our family 
significant happenings in my life uh, to be have a tactile sense of grabbing a door of a barn door and opening it and hearing the sound of the crack, the metal track and the roller the door is going and, and knowing that sound on a daily basis many times. It's something that I share with my family, the family I grew up with, but also my generational family, my children who were not there, but we share that in common. But yet I also, again, appreciate that they can't even imagine to catch a significant glimpse of what I experienced in that place. So likewise, that's a family legacy, something we share together. And today's gospel text talks about families and Jesus's family and his relationship with them and interactions. And, and uh, uh, the commentary talks about uh, how there can be conflict and strife in there, but, but it also talks about another family. And it's the faith community family. As he looks around, those who do the will of my father, those are my brothers and sisters. Those are my parents and grandparents and grandchildren. Those who do the will of my father, those who believe in the truth of Christ, that is my family. And yesterday, as I met with Bill and had that connection with the founders of First Lutheran, and then with Mary Helen, who is not something I know personally, and I'm sure she feels the same way standing there as I do with my sons on the farm, saying, oh, Pastor Brian, if only I could tell you and share the fullness of what I know. Frank Winchester on the day could do likewise. He can only give words to something that is so much greater than that and his connection to the faith community, this faith family. And that's what draws him to join us to worship. It's what draws Joanne Coder to desire to have updates on what's happening in the faith community, whether it's the bell tower or updates on Don Thompson or other faith family friends. Uh, it, it's what draws Kathy to go to Joanne and make the connection with her to maintain that and Priscilla and others. It's what causes Margaret to say, you know what, I'd like to go Pastor Brian with you to take communion to Joanne so that we can share in that sacrament together, but also just to be in the presence. Two women who from 1957 on shared the sacrament almost every single week for 60 plus years about, they shared in Holy Communion and saw each other in a very least weekly day process, but perhaps I imagine even more so as they were both engaged in the ministry at first. Today I'm in the park with lots of people in the community, but specifically with people who are here to worship. You are on live Zoom worship. And so this family of faith, spirituality continues on from generation to generation. And we are connected and united in that way, in a way that's different than a biological family. As Chrissy and Dan made the difficult decision and the household decision as a husband and wife on what to do in their life. That is a personal decision. And but Chrissy brings it into, it crosses over into the faith community. And she invites the faith community to come into her life and to journey with her through this challenging and time of uncertainty and newness. With it, it's encouraging and hope-filled to know. As I said 17 years ago today, called by a church to be a pastor. I, for 17 years, have been part of a faith family as a pastor, but it's a blessing to be on that journey of years together. So that when I have the news of my mother and her cancer or my father-in-law and his heart procedure this very morning, uh, I am not alone in that journey. And we make that journey together and we lift up one another and encourage each other. Jesus' words, I encourage you to claim and be mindful of as a source of hope and comfort that in Christ we are united in unique ways as a community of believers, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we give you thanks that you have called us, this eclectic, unique, diverse group of people to be part of the faith community of First Lutheran Church. Uh, we are but one group of connected people from over the 179 years. And each group and each year changes things a little bit, but the constant is, is that we are united as your children. May we continue to claim that and lift that up and may we benefit from that, but also may we be diligent in sharing this good news with those around us in our community and beyond. Sustain us on this day, in Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Let us now join in, join together in confessing our shared faith and the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And before you go into prayers, Kathy, is Joanne there able to say hi? Or... Nope, she's not. Okay, Kathy's there. All right, very good. But she can hear us, all right? Very good. All right, Kathy. All right. So everyone's together. Well, I guess we can't, but uh, Joanne, we're thrilled that you could join us for worship. And uh, uh, it was great seeing you last week. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Uh, uh, Tyler, you can go ahead and continue with the prayers. Please join me in prayer. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of wholeness, we pray for believers all over the globe. We give thanks for our partnership with the Southern Ohio Synod. Unify us in service of the gospel that we may work together as beloved siblings to share your love with all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the cosmos, we pray for creation, the gardens, waterways, and creatures near to us, and diverse forms of life that remain unseen. Teach us to treat the natural world with reverence, seeking restoration when human divisions have caused harm to your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all people, we pray for harmony among the nations. Cast out from us unclean spirits of greed and fear that we may work in solidarity with one another for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of abundance, we pray for those who are oppressed or are in any need. We pray especially for Pat, Jim, and Kurt, and others in our hearts at this time, especially for Chris and Dan McCabe and the Ferguson family, especially Rachel's dad. Encourage those who have begun to lose heart, strengthen and renew us with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of righteousness, we pray for all who worship this day for First Lutheran and Queen City Church, for OTR Church and Warehouse Church. Set our gaze upon things eternal, that in thanksgiving for your mercy, we may extend grace to more and more people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the ages, in your goodness, you have sent us faithful witnesses for every time and place. We give you thanks for those saints who now rest in your eternal mercy, especially John Myers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. And now uh, we reflect on how God has blessed us and our lives abundantly, and we joyfully give back of our own bounty. Uh, we recognize that this is a faithful act of worship that we, something that we do uh, every week and consistently. And so we now ask again for your faithful stewardship in supporting uh, First Lutheran and the mission that we all share uh, as one church to share the love of God with one another, those around us in OTR um, and beyond our own uh, community. that 
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. <clears throat> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, remember the poor. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Katie, Jeff, and Zoe for the sending uh, picture there and the smiles as we head out on the Sabbath day. Uh, thank you for joining us for worship today. It's raining a little harder here, uh, but it should stop. So if you want to come down and catch the worship in the park with the Warehouse Church lunch, it be, should be a good experience. I can hear them warming up the band over there. Uh, you're welcome to stay around for virtual coffee. We have real coffee and uh, real donuts if you're here in the park. So uh, go in peace, share the love of God. Thanks be to God. <laughs>